Well, uh, I, apparently something is going to happen in this episode. Uh, maybe, maybe more than one thing. Yes. Uh, welcome back, by the way. Yes, it's great to be here in the incinerator with you and Santa and everyone else, Allie, actually. Sa Santa, yeah. And, well, everybody except, um, Akane, June, who... Yeah, wonder what happened to her. apparently a sender, not a receiver. Hmm. And, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, it just opens up more questions about her fever spells that she's been having. Yeah, she's been uh, getting really hot, and it was all weird, and, like, who knows? Yeah. Well, I, I guess we're about to get some answers to these questions. I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? Yeah, I was about to say. How did, how did you know, know that? why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... He did get a, uh, like, there was like a moment where he had like a, a danger or whatever. But the answer to that is easy. Oh. The answer to that is easy. Oh. He knew because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the Morphic Field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures, then? Imagine a river that splits in two, like an upside-down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom, from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction, it can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river's source, in the past, will never know about those downstream in the future. The people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river. Even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet. But I am also zero. What? No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you could say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. I'm sorry. What? Where did she go? June? No, Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh, shit. Freeze. Santa's got the gun. Santa's got a gun. Yes, he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up. Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks... drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any numbered doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? <laughs> and he used to give his sister a present? Wasn't that the story? Yeah, every, every year, except, uh, well, you know. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess that this is, like, some sort of, like, weird 
blood sacrifices needed to bring her soul back or something. That's why he's... I don't know, man. You know what? I'm going to stop guessing. There's just... This game is, un is very unpredictable. I, I distinctly I... remember telling you off camera, you think you know where it's going, but you don't. Yeah. That's true. The hell does that even mean? Eh, that's shit. They're out. They're out there, and we're in here. Now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. He seems to be all right. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if the door still opens. Damn. Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? Looks to be. So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No. No, you can't be serious. Oh, but he is. Yeah, we gotta do something. Maybe we can still get out through door nine. There's the red. Yeah, all right, we can do this. I've just got to... No, it's not going to work. There's no way. Five of us can't open this door. Two, four, five, seven, and eight. We have a digital root of eight. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? You know, Lotus has been, like, awfully quiet. She's a little shaken, dude. Sure, why not? I don't think I'm going to need them. Ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Huh? Oh, man, she doesn't look very happy. But, hey, no, no need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez. What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! All right, at least Seven's got it away from her. Maybe now I can get a look at what she was writing. Let's see. Huh. Huh. What? Then there's no other way. Lotus. Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is what? just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Oh, come on, man. No. Earlier in the game, she was talking about, like, what if I just went... Like, what if we all just grouped up together and left the others and just got out together? And I was like, no, I don't trust her anymore. I don't like her. And now she's trying to pull the whole, like, go on without me thing. No. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! <laughs> Whoa, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without, uh, if you're not, look, it'd be bad, all right? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh, yeah. Uh, if there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh-huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, all right? End of story. Seven. They like each other. Aww. He's right. I'm not okay. leaving you either. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However... I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but... I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier, at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! What is, what is this? this? Why? Why? That did 
original root should be nine. It has to be nine. Yeah, it just has to be. Then why? Why isn't it opening? Just to see. Scale why don't issue. we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. Okay, well, we'll give it a give it a try, I guess. Give it a, give it the old college try. So they say. So they should be able to get out because they have a digital root of nine, but. You were right. Womp womp. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital root was nine then. I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. It's the only thing I can think of. Get. We can't get through the door. We can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get to that hole seven popped out of nine years ago. True. All we can do is stand here and stare at this door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. Yep, nothing else can be done, I guess. Roll credits, right? I was watching. Oh. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums, I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking, what he was feeling, what he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were as one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. Started with a tremendous noise, like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him and we became one, inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind, nine years in the future. I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. What? Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Eventually it becomes difficult to separate them and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here! That was my brother, Aoi. He was yelling. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up! We ran down a long straight hallway and burst into the large hospital room. Everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. The girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It had been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart. Just when all hope seemed lost, light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. What? Light? Hello? Hmm. Everyone? Could you oh, come that was over his here for a name. moment? Interesting. No, Light is his name. Oh. Okay. He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. Fights down down, and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right Aww. now, she is over in Building Q and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. Oh, yeah, she's Wait, 18. so that's her real name? Yeah, that's the that's... funny part. Wow, that's crazy. I imagine when she picked her clove code name, Snake was just like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> that's your real name, Clover. 
Yeah, so there's your answer to how old is Clover. She is 18. There you go. Okay, well, there we go. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Aww. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually, he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now don't ever forget. So long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were... calm. Dude, I love Snake. Whoa. He's so good. What a great guy. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with 9 on them, and we found them in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that meant only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already... children this is so cruel yeah just a little bit that didn't sound good my brother always swallowed hard and answered i think it means this room is gonna burn burn a plaque on the door says incinerator and that voice said that the incineration is about to start and incinerate means to burn Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then... High up on the wall, a door opened and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. Four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent away from the incinerator and slid down into the hall. 
We came out on the other side of door 9. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Owie, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door 9 before us, were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran and ran and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... Oh no, where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, had I dropped it as we slid out? I had to go back. I had to. But I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me. I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship. I hid in the shadows, and moments later I felt a rush of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could, down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back toward the stairs and freedom... The door to the incinerator opened and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Intaro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Ah, oh, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps, and I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No! I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to let Hongo go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! Ugh. He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. Ugh, I screamed. Man. Help me! Somebody help me! Then suddenly... Akane! The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Owie burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Uh, Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt toward Hongo. You came back! I cried out, but then... Ah, you're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the open number 9 door. Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. Those fists never reached Hongo. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, the door slammed shut. Hongo glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red and sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? 
He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I was nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... Two other doors slid shut as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. A worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed lonely around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here! Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! W what? Then it started again. Morning. Morning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in... 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Oh, holy shit. Man, I knew it was gonna say that, but this is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years! What the hell? What. The. Hell! What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments. You aren't making any sense. Time for her to learn, I guess. <laughs> I don't think we have time for that. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But... <laughs> Incineration will begin in... 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! <laughs> uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well... God damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. Floor. It's moving. Huh? What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? <gasps> what is that? What is that? What else could I say? Floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. Is this present day Akane? talking no okay that was, it looked like a, a computer at least it kind of did there was a monitor a keyboard and a cross-shaped device of some kind something about the machine scared me but i forced myself to walk up to it i was terrified tears poured down my face i wiped them off even as more took their place and forced myself forward finally i reached it i looked at the screen it was blank. All I saw was my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei, just calm down, all right? Everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. Man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in... 15 minutes. Alright, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's gotta be important. But 
What the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey, move! Ow. Hey, we're all tense, lady, but that doesn't mean you get to shove people around. Jeez. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, I'll just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... Huh. Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. Got a bunch of numbers and letters scattered across a 5x5 five five grid. Numbers range from 1 to 8. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah. Well, we can hope, right? Uh... All right, puzzle. Well, it's... How do Jeez. you work? Ah, oh, man, that uh. gosh darn voice again. Incineration will begin in... 13 minutes. Oh, shit. 13 minutes? Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but... I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey, what are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening, evil face. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Oh, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, God. really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. I hate this guy so much, man. As you should. He's kind of irredeemable. Just solve the puzzle on that machine. <laughs> Jeez, man. His laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now. My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man. Huh? If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape. The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face on my bracelet showed a five. One plus three plus five is nine. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hongo's muffled voice from across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? 
Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? Why? Why are you doing this? <laughs> you could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. <laughs> now start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't. Is, are her and Junpei going to like You'll exchange answers with each other from <laughs> the future and the past? <laughs> Gonna be quite that'd be, be kind of crazy. I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> okay, dude, I know what you're trying to do, but like you're, it's, it's too much, man. Like you're enjoying it a little too much. I mean, he might be getting off on the danger of it all. Possibly, yeah. Uh... His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after his face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in 10 minutes. I was crying. Great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the monitor. I can't. I just can't. There's no, th there's no way. I can't figure this out. What was I going to do? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered my thoughts and all I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating and my blood was boiling in my veins. I was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself to pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! 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 Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Oh my gosh. Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me. I think Snake may have figured it out. Oh, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here? Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck. Did something break our connection? Where I just heard her. Shit. Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy! Spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly, like he was right there. Jumpy! Screamed as loud as I could. Akane! Jumpy! That's her. She's there. And that man. Akane! Akane! Are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How? How did you know? I couldn't believe that he knew that. 
Now I understand what Santa meant. Right. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. Yep. We don't have time! As quickly as More I could, I told her I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Time traveling morphogenetic fields. And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the Nonary game was held today. I know oh, why we were kidnapped and brought here. That's why she was a sender! Junpei's a receiver! It was all for this moment. I get it. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. Oh! Is he gonna change the past? This is insane! Wait I, a minute. I can't minute. believe it, but there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kurashiki. He recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan, I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. Oh, I must man. save her, no matter what. Oh my god, man. Oh, wow. Her voice reminded me of how much time I had left. Oh, man. Yeah, I know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. All right, time to get to work, Junpei. Snake talking to them about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you... Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus, I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more uh, at stake here than your pride. This also goes back to her, like, wireless transmitting of, like, the computer data to a, a wireless monitor speech that she gave. It's all connected. Sure is. I'll apologize later, all right? Now let's have a look at this thing. We've got numbers all over this grid. I think the panels are out of order. Do I just need to switch these out? Staring at it isn't going to accomplish anything. I'll just have to try it. Ah, <sighs> just think of what I did all those times before. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. And for the last time, we have to seek a way out. So, all right. I will say, when this is all said and done, you need to watch this final scenario on the original DS version. It completely mogs the remake's rendition of this in every way. That's my one complaint with the remake here, but... Really? Yes. Okay. It absolutely is way better on the DS. Like, it's not even close. Okay, so hold on. What's the... Oh, oh, sorry, I, I just solved that really easy puzzle while we were talking. Wait, was that the whole thing? Yeah. Oh. So what, what was the password? Were you paying attention? Uh, uh yeah? Yeah, what's the password? Password. <laughs> That's what I thought, too. I don't know, but I don't, I don't know. What is it? 
Oh. Really? Okay. That is my final answer. Yes! That's it! That was so quick. I feel like I didn't even get to in yeah. That was Like I said, watch this puzzle in the original DS game and just this entire scene in general. It completely mogs this in every way. They had to change it because they didn't have two screens, unfortunately. And a lot of the effect is lost, but you know. Akane! Did you get it? Yes, I did! I solved it! I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did! Now I just have to press enter! Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay, I will! I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been confirmed. Incineration system has been disabled. Okay. <gasps> Jumpy! It worked! It worked! The incinerator shut down! It worked! Aww. Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I'd had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, laughing and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Whew. I can't quite believe I did that, but I am so glad, so glad. I, I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane, sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course, that's fine. I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. And I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay? No. Ah, shut it. Right. Okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. But what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? Alright, nothing holding me back now. Here goes. Wait. Incineration will begin in 90 seconds. Okay. <laughs> what? I'm really confused. What? What? It doesn't sound like it's stopping. <sighs> what the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again, and again, and again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? Got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. Why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin. 60 seconds. Whoa. Wait, of course. That's what the numbers that showed up after the puzzle mean. You can't see it because there's a text box in the way, but it says 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. Snake, Clover, Me, 7, and Lotus. Then, door 9. No, that's it. That number on the door isn't a 9. It's not even a number! It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that... Holy shit. Holy shit. Of course. <laughs> we just have to put the right number into the red end. Incineration will begin in... 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Yeah. Run! This is their final dead 
kind oh, of. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Don't have much time. Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or we are fucked. All right, no time to explain. Just go. Quick, verify your numbers on the red. Verify? Who? What combination? All of us, we all need to verify. Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! Hurry, 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 hurry! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Could not have cut that much closer if they tried. That's, uh... Oh, <laughs> wow. No, no time to be happy. Time to go. Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes. Go, go, go! Come on, guys. Move it. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. Still gotta find the dead. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> Man, that guy sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. Snake is shaking his head wearily. I just want to take a nap, but... Akane? Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. Nothing. Maybe she didn't figure out. Oh. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! cried his name, even though my voice was almost gone from screaming, and leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! Oh. Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I'd passed through the door, my bracelets had begun the countdown to death. I leapt away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. Spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to it and scan all the bracelets. I left the one Hongo had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. Ah. I took a deep breath and looked around again. That huge detective who'd we'd call Seven in Nine Years and Snake, the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. All right, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Aoi was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise and they nodded. We took off running up the spiraling stairs to freedom. Time for more running. But if they can get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. I can't wait to breathe real air again. 
Uh, is seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? <laughs> What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why did it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. Two plus four plus five plus seven plus eight is twenty-six. That makes our digital root eight. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? Because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? <laughs> yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base ten? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero through F. After nine, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. Right. So what right. about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? At speed. Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So, I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 70, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and? What comes after that? Uh. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Q. It was a Q the whole time. 26. <laughs> and what does that mean? Interesting. That wasn't a 9 on the door. It was a Q. It was a Q. That's... A fucking lowercase Q. <laughs> that's... Mm, yeah. That's... What a freaking troll. What a troll. Yep, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Time for more running. My thighs are killing me. I swear, <laughs> any moment now I'm going to tear a Junpei, muscle. My, my thighs are killing me. Can we please stop running? We've been going up the same staircase for... For like 20 minutes now. Yeesh, shine. I mean, I My lumbago is killing me. <laughs> they were at the bottom deck, so if this is the way out, that's a lot of stairs. Oh, my glutes are gonna be so strong and sturdy after this. <laughs> I feel like every single cell of my body is dying for air. Dang, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. Nope, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs. There can't be many more of these steps left. Let's run. Run! Like a bullet down a rifled barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're this running along feels... the... What? It just, this feels very filler. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally. We. Goodness me, I can barely breathe. No, Junpei, no time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. All right, I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here. Please do. Sure, you look like a big, heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open and you're gonna open now. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy I felt like I could melt. My heart was at peace. Not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us who had been kidnapped. 
finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. Wait. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Uh, then how are they on the gigantic in the future, unless it's just a different timeline? Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over. Now he whispered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue. What would happen in nine years? Yes, finally, air. Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh, gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way. You have got to be shitting me. What? Are it they not on a be. ship? This is... The desert? What? Building Q oh. in Nevada, baby. Wait, this they're in Nevada. The Nevada desert. They were never on a ship to begin with. The mock experiment oh. building. Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q. Fair enough. That's a desert out there with mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right. Her bracelets. I guess I never really got a good look at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little electronic chip, like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never what? a detonator to begin with. Oh, wow. Figures. Akane. Jumpy. <laughs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice on the wind. Well, that's the real credits. That's there's no more. What's the end? Oh, well, there's a little post credit thing. Because I feel like we never like what happened with Am I dumb, or did I just completely misunderstand what happened with Alice? What do you mean, what happened with Alice? Was it supposed to be Akane? No, that was just a red herring. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, the whole time we were actually playing as Akane, just looking into possible timelines. Isn't that just crazy? Wait, so this entire time she was just looking through... Junpei's perspective, like, point of view. And the other timelines are canon in the past because she saw like, those outcomes. I mean, all of the timelines are canon to their own timeline, so... So... I guess she lived in and then it branched off into a different timeline in the past? So basically all those times where she was uh, getting super hot and feverish was... She was looking at timelines where it wouldn't make sense for her to be there anymore, so her body was being kind of, like, internally incinerated to kind of correct it. Wait, so... What? Why was she... So is she alive? Yes. In this timeline? She's alive, now. But is she with the group? Are you okay? 
flashback. Oh, come on. Uh, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute first. Um, well, let's see. <laughs> this, this dork. <laughs> it looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? Junpei grinned and... Oh, ow, 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 ow. See? I told you you're not okay. You're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV, this thing has a pretty smooth ride. There was nice of someone to leave it for us outside the building, keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know? Anyway, we jumped in and here we are screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. Still can't believe we let her drive. This is so fun! Oh my gosh. This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around, and there's no speed limit! Hey, uh, Clover, watch those bumps, alright? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shut it! I can't help if I'm big, alright? Suck it up! Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop, I ain't gonna break the law. Uh. He doesn't have an international license. And you do? Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving this seat up. <clears throat> and Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and June are in should be somewhere down this road ahead of us. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've got to hurry if we want to catch them, don't we? Sure thing! So if we hadn't succeeded in this timeline, then June would have just vanished? Yeah, because she shouldn't have existed. But, like, the timeline just supposes that she will exist, but then up until that point in time, that determines whether or not she does. And if she doesn't, at Are that point Are you familiar time, with Schrodinger's to... cat? Yes. He was kind of both alive and dead at the same time until it was determined which was the correct answer. That's very weird, but an interesting way to handle time shenanigans that other games and stories don't really ever do. I so. mean, it's why Seven was kind of freaking out there at the point, because he was like, wait, is she dead or did she live? I can't actually remember. Interesting. Just darn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even think a car like this could go this fast. For sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after we'd run into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them furious. Hey! hey what the hell are you doing? And he jumped on them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me! Officer, Officer please! please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy sprawled on the ground with his face covered in big, swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I, I guess I could have... Then why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. <laughs> My what man. what were doing to the kitty. Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Ah, uh, there it is. Oh. The la one of the last the loose bunnies. ends. Yeah, the bunnies. 
plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. And then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbits. I couldn't forgive them for that, so I... Hey, uh, there's still some stuff I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Like Ace. Well, I guess I should say Gintaro Hongro. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? Why don't you ask him yourself? There we go. I was wondering. Yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume? Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. His eyes just look empty. No emotion. It looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. Let's get that tape off your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. I'm a be real man. As far as villain motives go, yours is not very sympathetic. I am sorry. Not to mention, like, that's not how that condition works, I don't think. You can still see faces. You... Again, I, I think Hongo here is quite overblowing the severity of his disability, but I guess yeah. I'm not an expert. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes. If you want to put it simply. But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness... Nobody cares. Cool motive. Still murder. I think that's enough out of you, pal. <laughs> I have the tape to go back on. Yup. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well... See, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own, hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. And during the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really Anthony answering Gordain. my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like Hongo has something to say. All right, fine, I'll let you talk, but you gotta behave. What? <clears throat> Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus Madragora. Of the family Solanaceae. I was what? able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. Oh, to make the. Yeah. I used that extract so... to create Soparin. Yep. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is going, gonna go on forever. It's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my <laughs> questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here, uh, this is for you. What's this? This is, uh, for you, doll. Uh, his name is Junpei. <laughs> Junpei pulled something out of his pocket and shoved his arm out toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn small enough to fit in his palm. Chumpy, are you sure it's, uh, for you, doll? Huh? Uh, yeah, the, the lady at the shop said so, so th that means it's for you, right? I, uh, are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? <laughs> well. Wait, what? That, that's... oh man, oh man. 
<laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Yeah, I, I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea then. Why are you giving me this anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, y you know how after June, um, we aren't gonna get to see each other too much? I mean, we're gonna be in different schools, and... I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um... Oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? <laughs> okay. Wow. So, Full circle. Uh, I wanted yep. to give you this. <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie. <laughs> uh, yes. I, head of tribe. This doll, traditional charm of tribe. <laughs> so I give this. It me. So we always together. Oh, Chumpy. If something bad, then hold and pray. I go wherever you are. So here. Oh. Oh, okay, I remember this. Oh. He reached my really hand sweet. out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny young body. Oh, Jumpy. I'll never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you, either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in the warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one, the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic. But she's still alive now, as June. But how? Is it because I tapped into the Morphic Field set and saved her nine years ago? Uh, alright, let's say that makes some kind of insane sense. I did that, then. How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense, he's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. Seven? He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of... Historical discrepancy? Or wait, maybe that's not it at all. Here's one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? It's never confirmed, but there is a fan theory that Seven was in on it too, but who knows? That'd be weird. Satisfied. Well, not weird. It wouldn't make sense, but yeah. It's up in the air and never touched on either way. No, no way. He couldn't. Huh. Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody next to the road! I mean, it could- it, it wouldn't- it would make some sense, but... Huh? What? Hmm? <laughs> what? Uh, huh? What? Ah, uh, yes. What? Burning gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there on that shimmering plain was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It would not be long before Junpei realized who she was. The end. What? what? It was a mirage, right? Right? Okay, I guess we're just gonna leave it hanging. Wow. Don't forget your towel! Well, that was a journey. That was a really great 
Wow. That was great. That was a really good. Yeah. Well, well there you there you have yeah. it, folks. We're, that was that was the game. Thank you for sticking it out with us on this journey this entire time. If you're still watching, this has been a really long and fun experience. And that was a really good story. I'm really glad I got to experience it, even though I had no idea where it was going. And that was, yes, I'm glad that that was the ideal ending. And that was actually like a definitive, like actually very good ending, too. Oh, yes. No, it's by all objective measures, a good ending. So I am I'm satisfied. What a what a good game. What a good story. I mean, I guess I'll take I'm, the time to ask. Uh, was there anything uh, you needed clarified or questions asked or anything? I don't think so. I feel like it did a pretty good job wrapping up pretty much everything. Still don't know what a funny Rimpa is, but. Um, oh, you know. my. Yep. Uh, otherwise, no, some I think people. That... I mean, it all it all kind of makes sense now, but I guess uh, they're going to go reunite with Santa in June, and he's basically going to be like, yeah, no, this entire thing was like a prank, basically, to oh. uh, simulate. Oh, do, do you want to know the answer to what people asked him what happens after the ending? Yes. Uh, he basically said in an interview that they never find June and Santa, and Junpei spends the rest of his life looking for her and never finds her. Oh. And that is all the information we got from that developer interview. Well, I could have gone without knowing that. And you know what? It doesn't mean that it's canon, just because he said it in some interview. I like that line of thinking. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. And uh, that was a really great story. Great. You know, I was not expecting most of what happened. Uh, so... Join us for our next Let's Play. Whatever could it be? Yeah, I have no idea, but I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be recorded for quite some time, because, oh boy, it's going to yep, take me that... quite a while to edit all this. Oh, man. Yep. Not to mention, Any... you know, other Let's Plays and streams and all that good stuff, so it might be a while. Yep. But whatever we end up doing, it'll be amazing. Just like you guys. And me. Sure. All right. Anyway. For the last thanks for time, joining us. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Wait. Yep. Thanks for watching. Ollie, ruin <laughs> it at the last episode, too. The nerve of some people. Uh, if, I wouldn't be me if I, if I didn't. <laughs>